With restrictions relaxed, I'm travelling across the UK to see how the country's top attractions are doing, to meet the people getting us excited about travel again and hear their plans for the new normal. This time, I'm in the Scottish Highlands. Hello from Inverness, the northernmost city in the UK and the gateway to the Scottish Highlands. It's also home to a very famous resident, Nessie, aka the Loch Ness Monster. But I want to see what else there is to do in the city, so let's go. Pre-pandemic, Inverness and Loch Ness welcomed up to 1.6 million visitors a year. It's also one of the country's fastest growing cities. Now I've heard there is an unofficial official cake of Inverness. And it's made by a family-run bakery that first opened shop here back in 1898. It's called a dream ring. It's very creamy. It looks like a donut, but it's 100% not a donut. Inverness Castle used to be a prison and a courtroom, but now it's undergoing major renovations to turn it into a visitor attraction. Hello. Hi there. Welcome Hi. to Inverness Castle. <laughs> Here's hard hat and high vids. By Scottish castle standards, this one is relatively new, built in 1836. This is the grand entrance lobby. Stuart started on this project just before lockdown, and it's expected to be fully complete in 2025. Well, you can already see we've made an opening in the wall there. We're going to let the public spill out there onto a new terrace. And here we are at the top of Inverness Castle, and this is the view you get. This is spectacular. Inverness is a great wee city. And the site's really significant. It's had castles that have been burnt, besieged, mm -hmm. rebuilt. Mary, Queen of Scots, Robert the Bruce have all had connections with this place. So when people come, what would they expect to see? So they should get a fantastic sort of immersive experience that uh, tells them stories of the Highlands, mm -hmm. find out about places that they've never heard about and hear stories they've never heard about. And the hope is that that will inspire them to then go out and visit these places, which are dotted around the far reaches of the Highlands. Did you find with the pandemic, it reframed your thinking of how to create the spaces? It galvanised our design in a way. So we had to try and figure out ways that you could loop around and avoid passing over in tight spaces. Because before that, that wasn't even part of your considerations, doing one-way systems. Yeah, no, one-way systems weren't really a thing. But we've tried to make it not obvious, though. You feel like you're exploring a castle. Because yeah. who knows what 2025 will look like? So I guess in some ways, the pandemic has future-proofed the design of the visitor attraction. Definitely. For some, though, it hasn't been about getting through the past few years, but rather a chance to start something new. My next stop requires a little car journey out into the Highlands, where from July to October, the heather grows wild and in abundance. Oh, hi, Kat. Hi. This is beautiful. Oh, it's great, isn't it? So what we're looking for is the nice blooming parts of the heather. So what type of flavour does this the so yeah, if you can smell it, it's quite a mossy, kind of earthy, subtle smell to it. But when you when you put it in gin and you distill it, it gives a lovely honeysuckle, really wow. quite subtle floral taste to the gin. Daniel is collecting heather to make gin. It's one of the main locally sourced botanicals that he uses. It all started as a hobby after moving back to Inverness during lockdown. Then 13 months ago, he turned gin making into a business with plans afoot to run experiences for visitors to make their own. So one of the packages will be that you can hand forage their botanicals that you can take to the distillery and you can make your own gin, your own blend of gin. Well, with our heather in hand, it's time to head to his distillery a couple miles away along Loch Ness. You want to give me a wee hand? I would love to. Excellent. Well, this, this is my mum's old site. Yeah. So my mum unfortunately passed away uh, a year and a half ago. So we'd, we thought we'd name her still after after my mum. That's why it's called Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah, exactly. So she's back in her old shop, overlooking me, seeing if I'm, seeing if I'm behaving. <laughs> <laughs> so with a shop and a still, it was just about nailing the blend. 
So it took us 86 attempts to get our, our launch product to where we wanted it to be. 86 attempts? 86, yeah. So is this what you would learn as part of gin school if you were to sign up then? Yeah, absolutely. It's a miniature version of this, basically. And then after you can, you can name the blend that you've made and take away the bottle of gin with you. Well, whilst we leave this to do its magic overnight, it'd be a shame not to try it. So as they say in the business, here's one we made earlier. Slangeva. Slangeva. I like that word. Mm. As we're so close to the lock, I can't leave without at least saying hi to Nessie. And there are plenty of tour operators to choose from that go out daily. For my trip, I've picked a small one-boat company run by retired police officers. The lock stretches for 23 miles and contains more water than all the lakes in England and Wales combined. Lots of good hiding spots then. Well, there we go, we've just passed the red and green markers, which means we are officially on Loch Ness. So given that you've done over 400 trips with Taurus, all hunting for the Loch Ness Monster, how many times have you seen Nessie? Gary, I think, claims to have seen Nessie three times, but I always tell the guests that he hasn't seen Nessie since he stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that is why he gave me the champagne at the start. Exactly. Better chance to see the monster. You tried to trick me with those waves earlier. <laughs> I'm not going to say there is or there isn't uh, a, a creature in Loch Ness. Um, but I have seen some strange phenomenon on the water, like the waves, um, and, and you know they really catch you out. And you, you'll, you'll see a log on the surface traveling the wrong way against the current, and you think, how can that be? But there's lots of scientific ex explanations for it. But yeah, it, it can be quite interesting. Did you see the Loch Ness monster? No. I don't think we saw the monster. Unfortunately not. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from Nessie, it's a beautiful trip past castle ruins through stunning landscapes. A perfect way to end my day trip to Inverness. And as more tourists return, perhaps something else will too.